دين الإسلام سلام دين الإسلام سلام دين الإسلام سلام نظر يسقي دنيانا دين الإسلام سلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the studios. Today we are discussing something that's very, very profound, something that has lots of worth in terms of appreciating us as South Africans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَا آيَاتٍ لِلْعَالِمِينَ I'm going to give you the translation of that verse, but first I want to introduce to you my in-studio guest, that being Dr. Ibrahim Dada, the National Director of the Islamic Da'wah Movement of Southern Africa. Welcome to the studio, Doctor. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum to you and our listeners. Well, Doctor, the ayah I quoted is from Surah Rum in the 21st Jews of Quran. Allah mentions one of his most wondrous signs being the creations of the heavens and the earth and the alternation and the creation of different languages, al-sinatikum wa al-wanikum, languages uh, as tongues and alwanikum as colors. And today, a great portion of our discussion revolves around the Afrikaans language, its relevance um, to South Africans, and the stature that somehow, and how it has a link to us, particularly as South African Muslims. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, na'hamaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Qala rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassalu li amri wa halulu uqdatan mi lisani yafkuhu kohli. All right, Brother Abdul Rahman, uh, discussing about the Afrikaans uh, language uh, in South Africa, according to the census and the little research we did, basic research, there are 14% of South African households that speak Afrikaans as a mother tongue or, or native language or household language. First language. Yes, first language, primary language. That makes it about 7 million people speak this language. As a mother tongue, it is more than even English. In but South it, Africa. In South Africa. I guess that's quite an alarming statistic. <laughs> yes. And it is the third largest after Zulu and Afrikaans. More interesting is that it is a majority language in the western half of the country, Western Cape and uh, Northern Cape. And uh, it is, it has the widest geographical and racial distribution compared to any other language, even English. This is uh, surprising, Very Afrikaans, alarming. more so than Zulu and Kosa. And even more surprising, 80% of our colored community, their first language is Afrikaans, about three and a half million. 60% of the white community, their first language is Afrikaans, that's about two and a half million people. So Afrikaans is the primary language of the colored and white, the widest geographical and racial distribution and uh, it is now, as we know, the official language, one of 11 in South Africa. And of course, a vast number of people speak it as a second or third language. This is the story about Afrikaans in a nutshell in, in South Africa. So this is Afrikaans in South Africa. Naturally, they've been South Africans who have migrated. Uh, they are South Africans who work as economic migrants and economic expats in different parts of the world. Um, personal experiences, you know, go back to being on the London underground and hearing people speaking to each other in Afrikaans. What do we know about Afrikaans in terms of its presence globally? Interesting, you spoke, spoke about London underground. There are over 100,000 Afrikaans, primary Afrikaans speakers in UK. And a fairly large number of Afrikaans speakers in the uh, United States, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, and even Argentina and Brazil. So there's a fairly wide diaspora of African speakers. However, it has uh, dispersed quite widely in Southern Africa. So if you take Namibia, for example, 11% of the people, they speak Afrikaans as a primary language. Before independence in Namibia in 1990, Afrikaans was the official language with German. Uh, but even now, it is fairly widely spoken in Namibia, in Windhoek, and especially in the Southern regions. And the, so whilst it's, it is an official language in South Africa, it is an official minority language in Botswana and Namibia, and also fairly widely spoken in Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, and even Lesotho and Swaziland. So Alhamdulillah, Afrikaans is getting around, as I say, although in, in world terms, global terms, it's a new language, about 300 years old or so. This is, mm -hmm. this is some perspective of the number of Afrikaans speakers and communicators 
regionally, being Southern Africa, and then globally as well. Uh, what stature does the language hold legally, historically, etc.? All right. In South Africa, at the turn of the century, last century, 1910, when the Union was formed, uh, Dutch, standard Dutch and English were the official languages. But as Afrikaans was growing, in 1925, the Dutch was slowly replaced by Afrikaans. Before 1990 in Namibia, it was official language with German, and now it has an official standing there. And of course, in 1994, it, Afrikaans lost its priority basis for obvious reasons, but it is still one of the official languages with 10 others, including English. I'm sure many of the viewers are intrigued as to why I would be hosting Dr. Ibrahim, who comes, who hails from KZN, mm -hmm. which is a place where predominantly people speak the English or other languages, other official languages, and why we would be discussing Afrikaans. My next question would be, what is the relevance and connection of Afrikaans to us, particularly as South African Muslims? Okay, the one very interesting aspect that happened historically in the past, and also another aspect which is relating to now an IDM. The Afrikaans language began developing in the 16th century. However, from the uh, various Dutch dialects, the West German languages as they're called, from the United Province in Europe, which is now Belgium and Holland, and uh, in the 18th century, it began diverging from the standard Dutch. Initially, it was called the Cape Dutch or the Kitchen Dutch derogatorily, and it was regarded as an offshoot of Dutch in, in South Africa. But that eventually changed as Afrikaans began to be recognized as a distinct language, especially in the beginning of the 20th century, where, as you know, in 1925, it became the official language. Now, having said that, uh, it is derived from Dutch, therefore 90 to 95 percent of its vocabulary comes from the Dutch language. The other uh, 10 percent comes from Malay, English, French, Portuguese, and even the local Khoisan and Bantu languages. So historically, this is the evolution of uh, Afrikaans. However, the first authoritative written work of Afrikaans was in 1861-62. Having said that, an interesting development took place at that same time when Queen Victoria of UK, of Great Britain, requested the then uh, ruler of the Ottoman Turk, I think his name was uh, Sheikh Sultan Abdul Majid I, he says, we have in, in the Cape of Good Hope, which was South Africa was known then, a small community of Muslims, Malays, and we need your help to educate them. Well, subhanAllah, that's some history with regards to the Afrikaans language. We're going to take a quick break. When we're back, we're going to unveil and unravel how Afrikaans has impacted on the Muslim community. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, I'm in studio today with Dr. Ibrahim Dada, the National Director of Islamic Da'wah Movement Southern Africa. We've been chatting about Afrikaans and the place the language occupies in terms of not just being South African, but being South African Muslim. Doctor, before the break, you were mentioning about the Queen of England um, giving certain directives in terms of educating some of the early workers or laborers who had come to the shores of South Africa. Yes, Queen Victoria, and she uh, needed to educate the Cape Malays. She asked the Sultan uh, Abdul Majid, the first, the Ottoman ruler then, can you help us with some teachers for our Muslim community? And he appointed a judge by the name of Abu Bakr Effendi, who was born in Kurdistan, studied in Mecca and Istanbul and other places in the region. And he arrived here in 1961-62. And besides doing his duties as a uh, thorough Hanafi scholar, he also began writing uh, an exegesis of Muslim uh, teachings. And the strange thing was, he wrote it in Afrikaans to teach his pupils. 
And the even stranger thing was, as most people know now, it was in Arabic script. Mm. So it was the Afrikaans language, but in the Arabic, Arabic alphabet. Script. And this work of his, which was printed by the Ot Ottoman uh, Ministry of Education then, uh, gives a good indication of the usage of Afrikaans at that time. So this was a major and a good Muslim connection with the Afrikaans language. Secondly, and coming to the present day, Alhamdulillah, 10 years ago, IDM found a Quran that was translated by our late Imam Baker. And it was out of print for many years, and there was a demand for it because we were involved in the Dawah field. So we decided to speak to the family of Imam Baker, got the permission to uh, reprint the Quran. We had a committee of scholars, and here we must thank the Muslim Judicial Council of Cape who gave us an assisting hand here and officially took this task. And with the help of the scholars, we uh, reviewed the uh, translation, made some changes, and came out with what was then the Afrikaans translation of the Holy Quran. Uh, Alhamdulillah. We have since distributed, printed and distributed about 20,000 such Qurans. But in the last two years, it underwent a major revamp, a major review of translations, finding even more suitable words to replace the older ones for the Afrikaans word for, uh, for in place of the Arabic. And we are now planning, inshallah, to print 40,000 Qurans in the next few months hoping we can raise that money from our donors because the demand is very high, inshallah. And just at this stage, I should mention that the total population of African speakers in the world, primary speakers, secondary and tertiary, equals about 15 to 20 million. So even 40,000 will not even dent it. Sure. Alhamdulillah. And just to add here that if you asked me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I would say, well, it's a language of the oppressor. But that is no more. Afrikaans is gaining ground. There is a groundswell of popularity in Afrikaans. According to the latest two senses, it is growing in every province, in usage, especially with the younger generation. In fact, it is more widely dispersed through the media, radio, news, print, TV, after English, more than any other of the other uh, of the total 11 languages. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a huge calling and demand for this Quran. And if there's something practical you and I can do, it is to sponsor for these Qurans, print them, and distribute them to those who need it. Well, Doctor, you mentioned IDM and IDM's involvement, uh, the modern day connection with the Afrikaans language in terms of Dawah. Um, share with us more in terms of the background of IDM, particularly what makes IDM unique in the Dawah environment or Dawah space. You see, IDM, alhamdulillah, began uh, about 36 years ago as a Dawah organization. And broadly speaking, we, uh, we looked at Dawah issue, educational issues, research and education that includes Quran translations and welfare as a last. Because there are a lot of organizations involved in welfare and very few doing Dawa, relatively speaking, and of those very few even working amongst our previously disadvantaged communities. So to that end, IDM was created in response to a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I mentioned before, when he says, uh, who is better in speech in Surah 41? Woman, Bismillah, woman, ahsanu kol mimman da ailallah wa amila salihan wa kala innani min al muslimin. Who is better in speech than one who performs dawah, does good, and says, I'm a Muslim? And the expected answer was, there's no one better. So we felt, let's take up this challenge, and we established one center in Ezulwani. And then when others heard about it, they said, please help us. And these are all so-called black areas or previously disadvantaged communities. And two and three, and now there are between 25 and 30 such areas that we support. We pay for the imam salary, all other expenses paid, literature and all the expenses. So it's a mammoth task. We have about 500, uh, 50 people employed. In addition to this, then we have built about 40 masajid and various other educational activities. So that in a nutshell is what IDM has been doing in the last uh, uh, 36 odd years, alhamdulillah. Sure. What are some of the 
achievements of IDM that stand out. Naturally, there's, there's achievements every day, touching lives of people, you know, making da'wah, people taking shahada, people learning how to recite Quran, people coming closer to Allah. These are all achievements. But what are some of the outstanding achievements yes. that you can recall? Alhamdulillah, you must remember that we are the Southern African Indigenous Organization, right? Based here, our act formed here, our uh, activities are here, our resources mainly from here. So for an indigenous organization, I think, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah that we have achieved so much. But the thing that stands out is that last year we completed Masjid number 40 amongst previously disadvantaged communities, which I don't think any other organization has achieved. And we thank Allah for this, that he has made us do this. And we are continuing. Our target is to build 100 masjids, inshallah. inshallah. We have built 20 boroughs and providing water to 10 other, about 10 other uh, areas on an ongoing basis. Yes. Though there was no need for a borough, but we are paying for the water uh, bill, etc. So this was, I think, a, a, a landmark. The other landmark is, alhamdulillah, as we explained last year, we came out with the Koza translation of the Quran, first time in history. And here I must thank our listeners uh, because we made an appeal through ITV and ITV joined us in making a pledge line and we were able to raise sufficient funds to print 10,000 of these Qurans. Normally when we print a book, we are able to print only one or 2,000. We, here we had raised enough money through the generous donors of ITV to print 10,000 Qurans at 40 rands each. And nearly half are already distributed in a responsible way. Alhamdulillah. We'll speak much more about Quran after this short break. Please stay with us. Deen al-Islam salam, Deen al-Islam salam, Deen al-Islam salam, Nagharun yasqi dunyana, Deen al-Islam salam. Deen al-Islam salam, Deen al-Islam salam, Deen al-Islam salam, Nagharun yasqi dunyana, Deen al-Islam salam. Welcome back. My guest in studio today, Dr. Ibrahim Dada, the National Director of Islamic Da'wah Movement of Southern Africa. Doctor, before the break, you highlighted for us a few of the projects of Islamic Da'wah Movement uh, in the area of distribution of literature. What are some of the other areas and activities Islamic Da'wah Movement have achieved in, in the last calendar month? Alhamdulillah, during Ramadan for the last many years now, we are distributing 200,000 meals for iftar to all the poor people who come who are fasting. This is done in 50 areas spread over nine Southern African countries. Likewise, for the Odhiya, Adhai, and if a Kurbani project, the same pro this project is also held in over 50 areas or spread over nine Southern African countries. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of educational inputs, such as sewing and computer and, and gardening classes. But also purely uh, welfare. We feed 500 madrasa children from these communities daily throughout the year during school time. So from school, they come to our madrasa and have a meal and then they start learning Islam. And, and many of them, most probably, that's the first meal for the day. So Alhamdulillah, Allah has made us do a lot of things, but we rely on support from the donor community, uh, inshallah. In a previous discussion, uh, at a previous juncture, Doctor, we spoke about the Qawza Quran. Uh, that project, Alhamdulillah, as you gave an update, has went off quite well. Most of the Qurans have been distributed. The next project I believe IDM is embarking on, uh, that you alluded to early in the program, is a reprint of the Afrikaans Quran. Can you give us some details in terms of the scale and the scope of this next project? Inshallah. We have printed about 20,000 Qurans to date and we have none left. When I say none, maybe just a handful lying on our shelves. There is a very heavy demand for the Quran in Afrikaans uh, language. There are 15 to 20 million African speakers in the world, according to the latest estimates. This is including the 7 million primary speakers in South Africa and not to mention the other Southern African countries. So we are targeting 40,000 at a cost of 25 rands. We've got it at a very good price. And we're hoping, inshallah, to have a pledge line uh, in ITV. I believe this is arranged for next week, uh, uh, Saturday, Saturday, on the 15th of February. And we're hoping we can raise enough funds to be able to uh, print 40,000 such Qurans at 25 rands each. So Afrikaans, Qur'ans, 40,000 of them to be printed and distributed in 
South and Southern Africa at a cost of 40 rand each. 25 rands each. At a cost of 25 rands each. Remember, these Qur'ans are distributed free to all who would be able to take benefit from them. So your contribution of a 25 rand towards one Qur'an ensures that someone who speaks Afrikaans, who understands Afrikaans as their primary language, would be able to understand that message of Qur'an. Saturday, the 15th of February, between 7 and 11 p.m., a live pledge line. Remember the verse of Qur'an, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have reve revealed, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ from this Qur'an, مَا هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That which is a cure and a mercy to all those who believe and to all those who live in the world. An opportunity for each and every one of us to plug in, to be at the face of inviting someone to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that beautiful message of Quran. Remember that date, that time, Saturday the 15th of February between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. Inshallah, live pledge line on channel 347 here on ITV. Doctor, with a few minutes remaining, any last thoughts or ideas from you? Yes. I just want to highlight the fact that this is as much giving this program as for our singing. Although we want people to donate for Isale Sawab and Sawab Ejariya for the Quran, but also we want to give the Quran to the public. So any other individuals or organizations, if they need the Qurans, feel free to ring us like people are for the Koza Quran, for the English, for the Arabic Quran. Uh, we don't want to print the Qurans and leave them on our shelves. We want to give the message out. We want to do our little bit. I should just mention here that a 17-year-old pensioner came to my office just yesterday. And he says, you know, I heard your Koza Quran thing. I stay in Candela Park in Durban. He says, I, I came to your office. I took three of the Qurans free. I went to my local library and told them to put it on the shelf and they did it. But you, because remember, our Qurans are registered with the South African catalog of libraries. It has an ISBN number, all our literature that we print. And this person did this little bit. He, of course, will get his reward, his ajar from his Lord. If people can also, as I said, this is for giving as well, can come to us and do that little bit, go to the local uh, community library or any neighbors they want to ask, do that little bit. You'll get your sawa for it. We want to spread the pure pristine message of Islam to people and to counteract the hate propaganda that is going against Islam. It doesn't matter if people don't become Muslims. That's not our aim. Our aim is to give them the message and the rest we leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we hope, inshallah, people will remember that. Jazakumullah khair. And just to build on from what Doctor is mentioning, to think that this would make the ideal gift to a work colleague who speaks Afrikaans. And this, with the niyyah and intention of da'wah, is something that you do. Like that doctor correctly mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْدْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ That verily you are not the one who can bring hidayah and guidance to whom you love and who you choose, but it's Allah who chooses to give guidance. Though the duty is on our shoulders. So once again, an opportunity for us to plug in, to be at the face of da'wah, to physically execute the da'wah ourselves. Collect a Quran, from the offices of the IDM and inshallah distribute it to your peers, to your colleagues, to those in your workspace. With that we say Jazakumullah khairan wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Deenul Islam salam, Deenul Islam salam, Deenul Islam salam, Nakhrun yasqi dunyana, Deenul Islam salam. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima hatta تنالوا جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما